Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we're looking at the best weapons to start out on patch 0.14. We have a lot of changes to the game this wipe that makes it very different to how it used to be, so to actually decide on what is good, we need to be thinking about our decisions through the lens of the two most critical changes, the recoil rework and the armor hitboxes. So the first weapon that I think is really good now at level 1 is the PP19. You can buy this from Prapple directly and the beauty of this one is the extremely low recoil coming in at 42 off the shelf. With a dovetail rail, you can add a bunch of sights, my favourites being either of the EKP reflexes, although I still prefer the old version, the 802. This one sits slightly more clear of the weapon, making the target more visible, and its minus 3 ergo can be entirely offset with the sight shade for 100 rubles, as it gives back plus 3. 30 round magazines are purchasable from Prapor directly, and although both of the decent starting ammos PST and M882 are locked to level 2 traders, USEC and Bear start off with a decent amount of them so it shouldn't be an issue straight away. You can always check Fence as well to get some more, as he often stocks these. With 20 pen for PST and 18 pen for M882, while they won't go through your typical class 3 and 4 plates found on early PMC armour, it should still go through the soft armour around the plates, as this is almost exclusively class 2 on low level kits. Also, the extremely low recoil of the PP19 makes getting headshots easier than on most other weapons, and with the addition of neck and throat hitboxes makes this even more deadly than in prior patches. The only unfortunate thing here is that you need to complete Gunsmith 2 to unlock the AK-100 handguard which would then let you attach a laser, but the gun is totally workable without one to be honest. Some of these features are why I prefer it over the Kedda for example, on which the recoil is higher, you can't use a sight until trader level 2, 30 round magazines are not purchasable at level 1 traders either, and the best pen that you can get is 13 on RG028, so it should struggle with even the basic class 2 protection. I personally don't think the higher fire rate makes up for all of this, but it's up to you and I know some people really love the Kedda. Likewise, the MP5K and the MP5 are pretty nice, but the mount for sights is always sold out on Peacekeeper, meaning that you basically have to use irons with them 99% of the time. Not impossible, but it is a bit more annoying. The other choice in this broader SMG category is the PPSH. While the 1000 RPM is nice, it still has a lot of muzzle flash, but one thing to note is that the left drift on the recoil has been removed, so this is much more controllable than it was before. With the best pen here hitting only 12 on AKBS though, which also provides the most recoil reduction, you really want to be hitting those headshots, but the full auto is a little bit RNG. Daughter bursts probably work better now outside of point blank with the new recoil, but also remember that leg meta is tricky these days with the lowish damage cartridges because black legs only pass through 70% of the damage to the rest of the body. This means that you have to hit them a lot to kill. 35 round mags are great though, and the option for 71 round drums is still there, but overall I think the PP19 is the class winner here. Next let's have a look at some of the rifles. I've been using the MDR a lot this wipe from the USEC starter kit, which does feel amazing, but obviously you can't buy this, so the AK-74U from Prapo is also perfectly serviceable if you want to buy yourself a full auto weapon. The biggest downside here is the lack of ammunition. The best that you can buy is US from Prapo with 17 pen, as even T is locked to level 2 these days. But the real benefit to 545 weapons early is the ammo that you can source from the map. If you manage to grab a couple of packs of even PS with 28 pen, this should deal with most things outside of class 4 hard plates and often you'll get something much better than that, anywhere from PP to BS which should all have no issues with early armour at all. Now that you can get a railed cover at level 1 for the 74U, you can just grab the basic AK-74U from Prapple 1, throw on the Pilgrim and add a sight of your choosing. It's still possible to add the B11 handguard as well at level 1, so long as it's in stock, which lets you add a basic VFG foregrip and an NC Star blue laser if you want to kit it out, although I think this is probably unnecessary unless you really value the laser. After completing debut, you can buy the version with the suppressor if you want to go sneaky, although I think this probably costs a little bit too much in the early wipe. A really rogue choice that has appeared on Peacekeeper 1 this time is the Org A1. With only 46 recoil, this is actually really strong, especially if you're a USEC, because you will start off with a boatload of M855 with 31 pen, and this ammo is on Peacekeeper 3 now if you did want to buy more. But the Org is a really good showcase of how the changes to the recoil system, and especially the weapon's pivot point being moved from the pistol grip to the shoulder, have fixed the blacking out of even what we consider a terrible optic usually like this, which is the default Org 1.5x. This gun is now totally possible to full auto through the scope and is really good on semi 2, with the main downsides being that other than the 30 rounder that it comes with, you can only buy 10 rounders for it from Peacekeeper 1 for your spares. There's also practically nothing that you can do to it modding wise, so no lasers, custom sights or anything like that. I haven't actually used it in anger myself yet, but it certainly seems to be an option. 
The other choices that we have are the semi-auto rifles. The ADAR is alright from Skia, but I'd still probably rather use the MDR or the M4 if given the choice from the initial kits, and would probably rather use the AUG as well, given that it has basically half of the recoil. If you do end up using the ADAR, just make sure that you don't accidentally buy the one that is twice the price for no reason on Skia, and it's highly recommended to finish Gunsmith 1 before you start adding sights. The Wyndham gas rail block needs to be unlocked before you can replace the large front post from the default gas block that can get in the way of the lower profile sights. This goes the same for the M4 as well. As for 7.62x39, we have the standard choice of either the SKS or the VPO136. If you get three little two shonkers, you could grab an AKM instead from Prapor, but it's practically the same as the 136 early on, except for the full auto mode, which is quite unruly at 100 plus recoil, so you end up tapping most of the time anyway. The way I see it, the basic SKS from Prapor is fine for super budget if you manage to find some decent bullets, but the OP SKS from Jaeger is better used by adding a dovetail mount, as it doesn't come with one anymore, and the PSO scope from Prapor 1. For closer range fighting, I think that the VPO 136 is probably better through the Bastion rail and some kind of sight, and ammo wise its 30 round mags are preferable. Just note that you can't buy these from level 1 traders either, so if you don't have any then you'll have to settle with the 20 rounders from Skier instead. Admittedly, these are much cheaper than the SKS mags, but you can top load the SKS with a stack of loose bullets, which you can't do with the VPO. At the start, you can only buy 7.62 HP and SP with 15 and 20 pen, which is a little bit rough for semi-auto guns, but after killing a few scads, you should find some FMJ, T45 or PS bullets, which are much better with 26, 30 and 35 pen respectively. Ultimately, this choice of weapon comes down to personal preference, as both are good, but as a previous VPO136 user, I have swapped out to the OPSKS this wipe simply due to the improved sight picture on the PSO scope, which feels so much better than it used to with the new recoil. An interesting alternative to the VPO136 is the VPO209, which is practically the same weapon but chambered in 366 TKM. The 209 used to have ridiculous amounts of recoil but has been tweaked a lot now, so it's only 133 recoil at stock versus 120 for the VPO136. What is really cool about this though is the ammunition. At level 1 Jaeger, you can buy either Gexa with 100 damage and 14 pen, or FMJ with 98 damage and 28 pen. While Gexa sounds tempting because, well, let's be honest, anything over 100 is serious amount of damage, I think FMJ could be a hidden gem. 23 pen should deal with the soft armor on the vests that we discussed earlier, and although 98 damage is probably not quite enough to kill in one shot once damage reduction is taken into account, it should still go through straight away and cause enough to kill on shot 2. If you hit the armpit or some other unarmored thorax area, that will take opponents down straight away, and it's also worth remembering that this is practically the only reasonable weapon that can have a suppressor bought for it from the traders in cash directly without completing any quests at all. The only other non-barter that we haven't talked about so far is the Mosin. If you like it, then great, go ahead and use it, but you can only buy HP rounds now from the start. To even access SP, you have to complete Skier's Supplier, but the quest meta value of the Mosin is also a lot less now than it used to be. One main reason why seasoned Kappa Hunter types used to use it a lot at the start was to complete Tarkov Shooter 4 in good time. This quest needed level 3 Sniper to progress further, but the quest has actually been changed to a PMC kill quest instead. The highest ranking quest that you need Sniper Skill 4 is probably still Psycho Sniper at level 10, but if nothing has changed this wipe then Shooter 8 gives you 3 points towards it and Shooter Born in Heaven gives you 5, meaning that you only need to get to level 2 Sniper Skill over the whole course of the quest up to this point, which is much less of a bottleneck. Outside of all this though, you can get better 54R ammo in Raid as well, so that is feasible if you really want to lean into the most in gameplay, but in my opinion, with the new plates tanking lower grade ammos from this caliber and everything T46 and higher being at least level 2 traders, it's not as powerful as it was last patch. Overall from the traders directly, I'm using mostly the PP19 on its own or the OP SKS with a PSO scope and a pistol backup for the bigger maps. It's worth a quick mention that pistols are way more usable than they were before with their recoil being dramatically reduced. I think that any of the 9x19 chambered pistols are pretty strong early due to the class 2 soft armor situation that was touched on before given they can use PST and M882 and they typically have quite high mag capacities as well. I don't really have a strong preference here but go and check out your old favourite of the pistols and you'll probably be pleasantly surprised. So next up, go and check out the changes not specifically mentioned in the patch notes that you might have missed here, otherwise as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons and as always, have fun in your raids.